Naoto Miura is an ugly teenage nerd who spends an average life being obsessed with gears and clocks until one day a beautiful girl in a black coffin crashes into his house and helps her save the world. A thousand years ago, the earth reached its limit and was destroyed. Then, a genius clocksmith who went by only a single alphabetical name Y built a whole new planet for humankind to live in using only gears. The creator named this new planet the Clockwork Planet. Somewhere in the future, the little green-haired boy named Nayato seems to be fighting with some military-grade robots with a girl named Marie and her bodyguard Halter. Nayato is guiding them, telling the robot where to go and making sure they arrive at the destination smoothly. Suddenly, he calls for Rai as you and a beautiful girl with two massive blades standing aside responds with, Yes, master, before jumping into the brawl and swiftly finishing all the robots. One month earlier to that incident, Nayato arrives home after his school day. It is revealed that Nayato has a weird obsession with clocks and gears. However, still being a loser, he has never been able to fix even one clock by himself and still asks God for an automaton to fall from heaven to make his dream come true. As he is having these thoughts, God hears his wish and sends him a big black coffin crashing into his roof. After narrowly escaping danger, he sees a button on the coffin. Curious, he presses it, revealing a beautiful grey-haired female robot in a sleeping state. Meanwhile, somewhere else, a little spoiled brat Marie Bill Breggett is freaking out because a worker dropped a container, saying that it was a national treasure that belongs to the Breggett family. The company Eris sends teams to find the box, containing an inactive female automaton personally built by Y. Turns out, Nayato possesses extraordinary hearing, which he can use to find that the automaton is unconscious because her gear is stuck. Although he is unsure of how to fix her, he still gets to work. His hearing skills enable him to fix her in no time. After fixing something for the first time in his life, Nayato decides to rest, but an explosion occurs, taking him down with it. Thanks to the automaton he has just fixed, she wakes up and rescues Nayato in no time and flies him away from the collapsing building. However, she drops him real fast after they make it to a safe distance. The automaton introduces herself to Nayato as Ryazu, unit 1 of the initial Y series who has been malfunctioning for 206 years. She thanks Nayato for repairing her and asks if he is able to repair her only by listening to the sound of her gears. Nayato nods to that question and impressed by his exceptional hearing Ryazu asks Nayato to become her master, to which he hesitates at first because of all the risks, but seeing that he is getting an absolute cutie, he agrees. Raya's Yu then takes his finger and puts it in her mouth and starts doing weird things and eventually registers him as her master. Afterwards, Nayato and Raya's Yu go out to see a place to live since Nayato's place is destroyed because of Raya's Yu's coffin crash landing. Nayato takes Raya's Yu to a place to stay but three creeps appear and start troubling her. Nayato tries to stop them in result winning Raya's Yu's robotic heart. In a split second, Raya's Yu takes out her sharp blades and threatens the guys to run away. Late at night, Marie wakes up and runs towards her guard to arrange the meeting with a team of clocksmiths. But, as expected, she commands and calls her guard dummy for stating the obvious. After the encounter, Marie briefs the team leaders about the gravity irregularity. They discuss the potential malfunction within Kyoto's gears, warning that if not addressed promptly, the military might intervene to purge Kyoto and prevent the malfunction from spreading globally. Later, Marie and her bodyguard Halter visit Kyoto Core Tower in order to inspect the lower floors but the place comes under the military jurisdiction so one of the military personnel will be going with her. While in the lift the military personnel tries to disrespect her but Marie swiftly shows the military personnel who is the real boss. After threatening the military personnel, he discloses that the military has already decided to purge the city known as Kyoto Grid in 20 hours. After listening to this, Marie gets angry that the military is going to kill over 20 million people living in the Kyoto Grid because they could not fix the gravity issue. Marie decides to fix the problem by herself but it does not seem that they have much time on their hands. Elsewhere, Nayato wakes up as he continues to hear noises from beneath the Kyoto Grid. Raya's Yu assumes that it might be because of minor errors in the city's mechanical system. So after using his enhanced hearing, Nayato also determines the malfunction is 70,620 meters down, to which Raya's Yu replies that must be floor number 24. Nayato asks how she knows about it, to which she reveals that she is also created by Y himself. Later Nayato takes her out. While sitting in a cafe Nayato reveals that he wants to get registered in a guild so he can work in core towers. Meanwhile, in the Kyoto core tower, Marie makes a call to the communication officer Lemons to tell him about the military's decision to purge the city. Upon her request, Lemons connects her to the service chief Conrad who tells her that the power is off so it will not be easy to get to the 24th floor where the anomaly is even with the help of her bodyguard who happens to be a cyborg. 
Elsewhere, Naoto on his way to school feels uncomfortable as he is the center of attention for everyone because of Raya's youth. Anyway, Naoto asks her what she will be doing for the time being, but surprise, Raya's youth transfers into Naoto's school in a cute uniform. She tells the class that she is not interested in being friends with anyone and declares herself Naoto's property, earning his classmates jealousy. Later while on their way back home, Naoto sees a clothing shop and asks Raya's Yu to come with him. Naoto makes Raya's Yu try on a formal suit which looks cute on her and yes somehow it leads to an awkward moment. Marie gets to where the barrel is with the help of Halter, but things ain't that easy as they now have to face military automatons to reach floor 24. Meanwhile, Halter shows his crazy moves. Marie reconnects its restoring power. In the process, there are nine hours and some minutes remaining to the perch. Marie and the other clockmakers still can't find the anomaly but still she does not give up and asks the clockmakers to keep narrowing the parts down. But before they can work, the guild asks her to stop. Upon her refusal to withdraw, Marie's license gets revoked by Officer Lemons. This is when Marie realizes that Lemons is helping the military in order to make the Breguet family seem bad. So, Marie blames herself for being the reason the military wants to purge the entire Kyoto grid, and believes it is their way of getting to her. She then decides to find a way to stop them in their mission. At the mall, Marie runs into Raya's Yu and recognizes her immediately. Marie tells Naoto to return Raya's Yu as she is the property of the Breguet family and they are currently in need of her help. Naoto refuses to release Raya's Yu to her. Marie, being the girl she is, impulsively starts talking about how to kill and get rid of Naoto's body, even though Halter tries to shut her up. She does not listen to him until she realizes Raya's Yu's sharp blades around her neck. Halter initially points his gun towards Naoto but soon puts it down and talks to both of them. Marie and Halter both reveal to them the problem and how the military wants to purge Kyoto City. Raya's Yu was designed by Y to maintain the planet's gears. However, Raya's Yu replies that her official designation is to listen to what her master says, and she is solely made to follow his instructions. Suddenly, Naoto's ears pick up another gravity anomaly noise and ask them to duck down. After it ends, both Marie and Halter are shocked and ask him how he was able to hear the noise even before any of them. Now, here comes Raya's Yu who starts praising her master and tells Marie and Halter that only Naoto was able to repair her after 206 years later with the help of his extraordinary hearing. Marie asks Naoto's help to fix the situation on floor 24, as no clocksmith is able to pinpoint which gears are having problems. Naoto wants to refuse, but Raya's Yu tells him that her little sister, Ancho R, is in the basement of the Kyoto Core Tower. This gets him to change his mind immediately. Marie tells Naoto they need to hurry to the Core Tower before the army realizes their plan, to which Naoto replies that it's too late. The army already knows, thanks to Naoto's exceptional hearing. He lets them know there are 12 automata in the parking lot so he can warn the others before they go in. Naoto's super hearing gives them an edge over the automata, and they can destroy them all in no time. Lemons receives news that Marie is dead, so he orders them to lie and says Marie got lost in the purge because he's afraid people will find out he killed her with the advanced automata. Unknown to Lemons, the news he has received is fake, and everything he said has been recorded by Halter. They continue their journey to the core tower. While fighting their way to floor 24, Raya's Yu activates her unique ability, Dual Time, in which she transforms her clothes into a beautiful white dress and enters an alternate timeline. But before she tells Naoto that even though it is just a moment for them, for her, it's three hours of straight fighting. The fight starts, and the others are unable to perceive as she destroys the military automatons and then returns to the normal timeline, all with no real time having passed. After she wakes up, Naoto asks her to marry him because he has fallen for her. Unfortunately, kiddo today is not your day because Raya's Yu rejects his idea. Naoto initially gets sad but removes his headphones and becomes a lie detector himself. Upon being asked if she loves him to which she replies yes. Anyway, Raya's Yu also reveals to both Marie and Halter that unlike other automatons she has free will and can make her own decisions. The group finally makes it to the 24th floor, only to meet service chief Conrad and the rest of his team at the pressure control. The gear-obsessed kid, Naoto is amazed to see so many massive gears and calls it beautiful but Raya's Yu gets upset and starts crying because Naoto likes the gears more than her but Naoto reveals that he likes her and the gears equally. Anyways Marie asks Conrad and his team to evacuate to save themselves from the purge but Conrad and his team refuse, as they want to help her save the city. Marie apologizes for doubting them. She then introduces Naoto to the teams and tells them that he will be the one to help them in fixing the core tower. The clocksmiths find it hard to believe but Conrad manages to convince them to give him the benefit of the doubt for Marie's sake and they only have three hours and some minutes left. 
Using his super hearing ability, Naoto is able to find all the 4,000 malfunctions, 18 of which are responsible for the gravity fluctuations within a matter of seconds. The clockmakers all get to work and quickly fix 12 of the areas pinpointed by Naoto since the remaining areas are too shallow that a human cannot get through. So Mori gets into one and fixes it by herself thanks to her sleek physique. Raya's Yu helps them repair the last problem, where she fixes the remaining five anomalies. The clockmakers are happy and grateful to Naoto after they confirmed that the repairs worked. Suddenly, the purge unexpectedly begins before the given time. So, Marie and the rest are thrown into confusion about how to solve the situation. Meanwhile, Lemons arrives at army headquarters in a panicked state and tells them to speed up the purging as soon as possible. After lots of contemplation, Marie comes up with an idea, which is to use Raya's use imaginary gear to reverse the energy output. Naoto, as expected, opposes this idea, making him and Marie get into an intense argument. But Raya's Yu, who has been watching all along, decides to sacrifice herself for the sake of the city. The purge gets into full mode, and the city starts to fall. Yet, much to Lemons and the army's shock, the city begins to rise again. Marie uses Raya's Yu's imaginary gear, which lets Marie and Naoto reverse gravity and save the city. Naoto suddenly hears some familiar voices, and it seems like Lemons sends an army of automatons to stop them but Halter and Conrad buy time by destroying all the automatons sent by him. After they stop the purge, Naoto desperately jumps towards Raya's use imaginary gear and stops it from being destroyed by the gravity generator. Marie then tries to fix Raya's Yu but fails but Naoto takes over and successfully fixes his darling. When she opens her eyes, he weeps and hugs her tightly. Some days later, it's Marie's funeral as she dies while repairing the core tower due to the collapse. However, there is a mysterious man who thinks that it's immature to have a funeral for someone whose body has not yet been found. Elsewhere, Naoto can be seen doing floral fortune telling, to guess if he will meet Ancho R or not. Raya's Yu who is standing nearby, reveals that he has done it several hundred times. As they both are talking, Marie appears with her bodyguard halter with a proposal. Raya's Yu tells her to go away as Naoto does not want to help her in her new mess but Marie keeps talking and reveals that she is planning to save the world from government corruption and just like Kyoto every core of the world needs to be fixed so she asks Naoto and Raya's Yu to join her. At first, Naoto rejects the idea but when she tells him that she will also help him to find Ancho R he kind of gets frustrated since he does not know what to do. Elsewhere the mysterious guy from before can be seen with his two partners as they are infiltrating the core as spies but things do not go as planned when a young girl appears in a glowing outfit and attacks them, killing the guy's partner on the spot. The mysterious guy runs off from the attack but soon gets cornered by the young girl and accepts his fate. Meanwhile, the public learns that the government, army and guild were part of the purge. Turns out, everyone involved will be getting punished including limits. Elsewhere, Marie and Halter celebrate their victory, and Marie reveals that Marie Belle Breguet is dead. From now on, she will be known as Marie Belle Halter, posing as Halter's little sister. Suddenly, Halter receives a strange message through a shortwave radio transmission. The odd message angers Marie, and she goes to Naoto, asking for his help to trace it with his sensitive hearing. With Naoto's help, she finds out that the transmission was from an area around Kyoto's industrial complex. When Raya's Yu asks what made Marie so mad, Halter tells her, making Marie even angrier. She asks Naoto to go with her to catch the sender, but Raya's Yu refuses. Halter proposes using the beautiful beach nearby to that area, persuading creep Naoto to go with it. Meanwhile, at the beach, Naoto is head over heels for Raya's Yu in her swimsuit and cannot stop taking pictures of her. Suddenly, anime logic kicks in, and they somehow end up on each other. Raya's Yu gives Naoto full consent to do anything, but Naoto is unable to proceed, believing that Raya's Yu's untouched beauty is essential, and he does not want to take it away. Naoto backs away and ends up in the water. Raya's Yu saves him and is about to kiss him, but Marie appears and argues with her for not being able to kiss her darling master, waking him up with a slap. When they reach the grid, Marie asks Naoto to inspect the surroundings, and they are shocked to discover it is a dead city with no human beings living there. Additionally, the city's core and clock tower have also ceased to work a long time ago. Naoto proposes that it must be because an initial Y-series unit like Raya's Yu existed in the city. Raya's Yu supports his claim and helps them get into the factory. In the factory, they come across a big hole in the floor. Naoto claims that there is something in that hole, but Marie and Halter are reluctant to go down there. Down the hole, they see the most giant weapon to ever exist. Naoto tells them that all of the clock tower's parts were used to construct it, thereby leading them to find an enormous automaton. This automaton runs on illegal electromagnetism and was built using gears from the industrial sector, explaining why the sector is non-functional. Marie gets furious and is about to tear it down, but the glowing girl from before approaches. Halter reveals that it's not an ordinary girl but an automaton. Raya's Yu recognizes it as Ancho. 
Without acknowledging Raya's Yu, Ancho R goes into annihilation mode and attacks them with her unique ability, Bloody Murder. Ancho R continues her attack which is a clockwork ball that can grind its way through steel, but Raya's Yu threatens her that she has one last chance to explain herself before she destroys her. Meanwhile, Naoto discerns through his hearing that Ancho R is crying like a child and asking to be destroyed under her glowing armor. Even so, Ancho R continues to attack, but thanks to Naoto's hearing, they can dodge her attacks. When it becomes clear she is not going to stop until they are all dead, Naoto tells Raya's Yu and Halter to attack back at her. But when Marie sees that she can get out new weapons from Dimension Wrath, she gets shocked. Naoto signals Raya's Yu to attack where she is standing. Halter and Marie also get the idea. The ground below them is nothing but space. So Marie shoots at the ground, resulting in Ancho R falling down. Halter also throws some grenades so she will not be able to come back up, but jokes on them when she jumps through the falling debris. Ancho R then pulls out a cannon that is strong enough to destroy cities with one attack. Raya's Yu and Naoto dodge the attack, but Halter stops dodging and decides to face her head on. In trying to save Halter, Raya's Yu and Naoto fall into the deep underground hole that was made for Ancho R. Marie screams for Halter to save the duo, but he claims it is pointless since humans can't survive in the deep underground and retreat. Marie weeps and blames herself for getting Naoto killed. After calming down, she decides to take revenge for Naoto. To start, she kidnaps the governor of the Mai grid. Marie asks the governor what he knows about the giant weapon on the deepest floor of the Mai factory. At first, he denies knowing anything but tells the truth after Marie threatens to end his wife and child's lives. The governor confesses that the Mai government is working with the military remnants of the purge Shiga grid. He also concludes that the Shiga grid was cleared because of the illegal electromagnetic experiment that was against the law. Marie asks him why he did not go public with all this knowledge. The governor says that all the Mai will be killed if he tells anyone and the weapon is only to stop the government from killing Mai. The governor blames Marie for telling people about the government's mistakes since the government is trying to make itself look good again. On her way back home, Marie falls to the ground and weeps. Suddenly, a sewer opens right in front of her, and both Naoto and Rai's Yu step out. They auto explain that after they fell, an old man helped them turn on the elevator, allowing them to come back up. After learning that Ancho R and the giant weapon are headed to Tokyo, Naoto makes up his mind to go to Tokyo to save Ancho R. In the bustling streets of Akihabara, Naoto takes a bold action, setting off an explosion after a cringe broadcast only to ensure the safety of the citizens by driving them away from the upcoming danger. Meanwhile, in the depths of the underground, Marie, Conrad and his team are preparing to confront Ancho R and the massive automaton to destroy the city. Marie also regrets allowing Naoto to broadcast, but Conrad tells her that she is not a good actor and should embrace her inner self as it is beautiful. Later, Naoto gives directions to Halter and Marie about the continuous attacks from Automaton, until he calls for his darling who easily destroys all the Automatons in a matter of seconds. Naoto collaborates with Raya's Yu to devise a plan against the upcoming Automatons and Ancho R. Raya's Yu tells Ancho R that they will help her but she also needs to fight from the inside in order to be free. The both Automaton girls transform. Ancho R uses the power of bloody murder whereas Raya's Yu employs the power of dual time, creating an alternate timeline to face Ancho R head on. However, after fighting for not so long, it becomes evident to Raya's Yu that Ancho R who is specifically designed for combat, outmatches Raya's Yu even in her own alternate reality. A revealing flashback exposes Naoto's realization that Ancho R cannot harm humans, only other automata, so devised a plan to use him as bait but Raya's Yu rejects the idea as she cannot do this, but Naoto persuades her, thinking on her feet. Raya's Yu uses Marie instead of Naoto as a stationary shield, frozen in the original timeline. An intense moment unfolds as Ancho R, on the verge of accidentally harming Marie, experiences a sudden halt in every gear within her body, seizing the opportunity. Raya's Yu acts fast and immediately destroys the mask that is controlling Ancho R. The duo is then returned to the original timeline, where the battle between the military and the group has come to its end. Both girls seem to be lying on the floor unconscious. Naoto and Marie rush towards them. Naoto is glad that the both girls are safe and out of danger. Later, Ancho R is now at Marie's safe house dreaming of her safe place, where she watches two toys arguing with each other until one of the toys asks them to stop. After waking up fully repaired, Ancho R warmly greets Naoto, Marie, and Raya's Yu and calls them her father, mother, and big sister, respectively but Naoto shocks and asks her to call him her brother as he wants to marry Raya's Yu but agrees to be her father as she calls him daddy in a way that melts his heart. In a heartfelt moment, Raya's Yu asks her to register Naoto as her master if she wants to. Ancho R asks Naoto a question and if he passes it she will register him as her master. 
The question is what is she? Naoto without a second thought tells her that she is a cute robot girl and surprisingly she accepts this weird answer. Ancho R asks Naoto for his first command to which he commands Ancho R to unlock the gear restraining her free will. After fulfilling Naoto's first and only order, tears of joy stream down her face as she realizes the liberation from destructive commands, embracing a future where she can never be ordered to destroy anything ever again. A person speaks about how several years ago, mankind sought to master the five elements of the world over time. They had acquired power so great that it almost approached the divine. Then one day it came crashing down on the humans when the earth was destroyed and reality was rewritten and they were faced with the knowledge of just how small they were in front of God. So they created their own world in order to survive. Back to the present, an old man is sitting on the throne with people bowing to him. Meanwhile, Naoto adores Ancho R and her cuteness. Suddenly the cube tied around her neck opens up and violently expels the head of the mysterious man from before and Marie manages to partially fix it so that it can communicate. As the mysterious man from before opens his eyes, he immediately recognizes Halter and Marie. The mysterious man asks them about the mysterious automaton Yatsukahagi to which they reply they do not know about it. The mysterious man shocks and reveals that he is the one who sent them the transmission and as they were talking the troublesome automaton Yatsukahagi activates and withstands the military's attempts to obliterate it. Afterwards, the automaton unleashes a magnetic explosion that brings all the gears in Akihabara to a sudden halt, including Raya's Yu, Ancho R, and Halter. Caused of these malfunctioning gears, they shut down. Somewhere else, the defense minister uses desperation to seize the military as they deploy the capital defense cannon to annihilate the massive automaton. However, the automaton shields itself with an electromagnetic barrier, turning the tables by obliterating the very cannon meant to destroy it. The prime minister and other high-ranking officials become uneasy when Karasawa Yu, formerly a clocksmith under Conrad and now acting as one of Marie's spies, questions them about who could be behind the creation of illegal weapons. He emphasizes that such activities would require support from within the state. In a revealing flashback, it shows that the old man responsible for bringing Naoto and Raya's Yu asks Naoto about if this imperfect world should end but Naoto tells him that he would not let the world end no matter what. Revealing the present, the old man is also the mastermind controlling Yatsukahagi on the surface, hinting at his hidden agenda for the future. After some time, Naoto wakes up and Marie shows him that her screws are attracted to each other harboring towards a chilling discovery that every piece of metal in a kehabar, including the crucial gears and automatons and cyborgs like Halter has been magnetized. Marie looks around with sadness informing Naoto that they cannot do anything. Even though they can't go outside, Naoto does not lose hope as he creates a hole through the wall and starts finding cables to climb down. Naoto also notices the gear being stuck. Raya's Yu's overheating reaches a critical point so he lifts her up, getting severe burns on hands. Surprisingly Ancho R wakes up causing Naoto to immediately hug her. Ancho R discloses that there is a built-in mechanism that allows her to demagnetize by reaching Kiri temperature. Later, Raya's Yu is having a big problem since she is getting too hot. So, Naoto quickly moves her to a colder place to cool down. In the middle of all this mess, Marie is impressed by how strongly Naoto sticks to his beliefs, even when things are really tough. Naoto decides to find a way to demagnetize Raya's Yu's gears, and Marie goes along with him to fix Halter after separating his head from his deflated body. Afterwards, Marie and Naoto visit Conrad seeking aid in fixing Raya's Yu and Halter but they are surprised to find themselves outside of a club and even more surprised when they see Conrad with girls around her. As they go in, Conrad shows them his hidden office in which he is fixing up a pleasure doll automaton. Marie asks Conrad to find a new suitable body halter as she can't and also takes an unconventional approach. She places the mysterious man's brain into a pleasure doll automaton body. As the mysterious man wakes up he introduces himself as vermin. After knowing that, Marie totally transfers a cyborg brain into an automaton which can't even a genius do. Vermouth is impressed and informs the usage of Yatsukahagi. He reveals that the device requires 66 and half hours to recharge and is ready to begin the attack to manipulate a conflict between the government and the military. After listening to this Marie is shocked because this can also start a new world war which can cause the world to be destroyed once again. Meanwhile, the government officials are arguing over the fact of launching a missile from a satellite named Tall Wan that will drop a bomb on Yatsukahagi, intending to obliterate both the massive automaton and the couples of cities with it. Meanwhile in Yatsukahagi, the old man who helped Naoto and Raya's Yu to get back to the surface is patiently waiting for the opponent's next move. Back to the main man in the group, Ancho R calls Marie's mother but she denies it and asks her to stop calling her that. Ancho R gets sad so Naoto decides to leave Raya's Yu to cool down gradually and takes Ancho R out. Hilariously, Naoto dresses as a cat girl, I mean a really cute girl. 
Naoto takes Ancho R to different places so she can enjoy what she was not able to for thousands of years. While Marie is overthinking what to do with the situation, Ancho R appears with a gift she won and hands it to Marie to make her happy and asks her to give her an order. Frustration builds within Marie, leading her to demand that Ancho R obliterate Yatsukahagi. Suddenly, Naoto faces a setback as his headphones, which are crucial for blocking out noise for his sensitive hearing, are destroyed, causing him to tire out. Despite this, he remains resolute in seeking revenge against those who forced Ancho R into becoming a weapon and caused his so-called wife Rise Yu to be in an unconscious state. As they are talking, Ancho R reveals that she wants to fight Yatsukahagi. After hearing this Naoto suddenly engages in a heated argument with Marie, who he accuses of attempting a similar approach. In a moment of realization, Marie acknowledges her mistreatment with Ancho R and issues a sincere apology and leaves. Later when Naoto and Ancho R come back to the Conrad office they are surprised to see Marie fixing Rai's Yu like a pro. Vermouth informs them that she has been working at Rai's Yu for more than four hours. Seeing this Naoto feels useless as he thinks he should be the one to fix Rai's Yu instead of her. Anyways, after fixing Raya's Yu up Marie gets a bar of chocolate from Ancho R as a treat. Marie also becomes aware of Naoto's limited knowledge of clocksmithing, relying solely on hearing and instinct. Later, Naoto informs Marie that they need to take over the Pillar of Heaven to achieve his goal, bring the perpetrators to justice, locate a new body for Halter, thwart the government and military schemes, and ultimately save the clockwork planet. Vermouth, finding the situation intriguing, decides to join their cause. His motivation stems from the belief that aiding them will prove to be an entertaining adventure. Somewhere else, a beautiful black hair woman appears with several automatons in front of her. Surprisingly she looks at her watch and reveals that she is waiting for Marie. At the Pillar of Heaven, Raya's Yu and Ancho R swiftly defeat all the military automatons and personnel without causing any loss of human life. As both girls engage in a fierce battle against the military, Vermouth also joins the battlefield, rushing towards the group of automatons while shooting with a sniper. Determined to find a suitable automaton for Halter's new body, Vermouth faces the challenge that Halter's previous body, HFSK-2, was not made in Japan, making it nearly impossible to find a replacement. However, Marie tells him to get a C-35, impressing Vermouth once again as she knows the blueprint of every robot. Vermouth gets into an automaton and drives it to a heavy-body automaton. Vermouth only destroys its artificial intelligence and hands it over to Marie. Naoto informs that the enemy is gathering troops, giving them approximately 30 seconds. Marie takes out her tool and skillfully installs Halter's brain. While replacing the brain, she somehow gains the power to scan all over the city. She notices a missile being launched towards her, faster than the speed of sound, making it undetectable even to Naoto. Fortunately, Halter regains consciousness and dodges the attack. Afterwards, the team swiftly eliminates the remaining enemies and takes over the Pillar of Heaven's clockwork system that runs Tokyo. The following day, Naoto is back again with his embarrassing broadcast calling out the military, and it seems in the midst of their last fight, they also capture Princess Hauko Hashinami, a vital ally supporting their mission to save Tokyo. Hauka, who is taken as a hostage, joins Naoto's scheme to trick people. This makes the citizens of Tokyo afraid, leading them to leave the area. This evacuation is meant to protect them from the impending danger posed by the tall Wong. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Kurosawa leaves the high official's meeting room as he thinks that staying there for longer will be nothing more than a waste of time. Within Yatsugahagi, the old man wonders about the motivation behind Naoto's strange decision to claim responsibility for the damage caused by them. The old man orders his army to divert all the energy to the main cannon charger at once. Meanwhile, Conrad informs Marie that their spy Kurosawa reveals the government officials want to use the tall one to fight Yatsukahagi in approximately six and a half hours. On the other hand, Naoto gets to admire Rai's used thighs and Ancho R's talents. Marie tries to find a way to take down Yatsukahagi, so the government does not have to use the tall one. Marie discloses their plan to utilize the Pillar of Heaven, intending to generate enough heat beneath the Kihabara to elevate the entire city to Kiri temperature, effectively reversing the electromagnetic anomaly. Hauka appears and asks Marie to spend some time with her. Turns out, both girls used to study at the University of Europe. Hauka reveals that Marie was able to complete her studies in a year, whereas it only took Marie a month to do it. As the intricate plot unfolds, Hauka finds herself pondering the possible risks associated with Naoto's distinct capability initially contemplating the hazard of his potential against them, as she reveals to get rid of him as soon as work gets done. However, a sudden menace from Raya's Yu and Ancho R appears around her, and Raya's Yu is ready to kill Hauka for even thinking about hurting her master. Hauka apologizes and takes her words back. Later, Naoto takes Raya's Yu to the flower garden as he notices that she is not looking at him. Raya's Yu, weighed down by remorse for accidentally causing burns to his hands during the malfunction, 
asks Naoto to promise to never do that again, to which he agrees. She also demands a punishment. In a surprising twist, Naoto responds by presenting Ryazu with a personally crafted wedding ring, symbolizing their mutual dedication. They then promise to be together forever. Meanwhile, in Yatsugahagi, the old man thinks about the answer Naoto gave him while they were under the surface. The old man introduces himself as Jenai Hurayama and in a sudden twist, Jenai kills his subordinates with electric shock after putting them behind the cell bars. Afterwards, the old man despises Y for doing the work of gods by replacing Earth with the clockwork planet. Meanwhile, Naoto and the group are observing Marie and others working on the Pillar of Heaven. Vermouth and Halter are going to deal with the automaton sent by the government. Suddenly Hauka appears to talk to Naoto alone. She reveals her appreciation for Naoto's single-handedly determination but is confused if he is doing this to take revenge on the government for hurting his automatons to which he replies with yes and Naoto reveals that he does not want to take any innocent life. The answer impresses and relieves Hauka. After some time passes, Naoto senses an unusual sensation. He approaches Marie and urgently requests the activation of the Pillar of Heaven. Regrettably, their efforts are useless because of the surprise release of an electromagnetic burst directly targeting the pillar. In a reflexive response, Naoto asks Marie to safeguard the pillar by skillfully manipulating the weather control clockwork and organizing the formation of rain clouds. Even with his instinctive attempts, the cannon shoots way earlier than expected leaving a big mess behind. Surprisingly, the old man directly contacts Naoto asking him a question about his understanding of how clockwork planet operates. Naoto and Ryazu immediately recognize the voice of the old man. On the other hand, the government responds by activating the tall wand only to witness its instantaneous destruction by Yatsukahagi. The scientist accuses Naoto of being Y and vows to end his life. Marie and Naoto both are in deep stress when Marie again asks him to send Ancho R and Ryazu to destroy Yatsukahagi. But Naoto is hesitant to order Ancho R to confront Yatsukahagi as he is afraid that he will lose her and finds himself in a tense situation. Ancho R looks at her so-called parents and decides to take matters into her own hands. Ancho R jumps off to destroy Yatsukahagi by herself. Naoto sends Ryazu after to stop her but Ryazu informs that she is not strong enough to stop but she will try to convince her to be patient and not take any action yet. Meanwhile, Naoto and Marie, fueled by jealousy of each other's skills, engage in heated arguments, even though things get as far as Marie starts slapping him. It is only through this chaos that they realize the potential of their complementary skills. Despite seeming impossible, they both join forces and embark on building a new pillar with new gears surpassing the previous one. Ryazu attempts to dissuade Ancho R from engaging in combat, but realizing the futility, she extracts a promise from Ancho R to return home regardless of the outcome. Tearfully, Ancho R activates her combat mode and jumps towards Yatsukahagi to destroy it. Ancho R uses her dimension wrapping and takes her cannon that can destroy a city but gets nerfed as she is now on the good side. She shoots and makes a way to forcefully infiltrate the massive automaton. Ancho R starts destroying everything within its confines but also gets damaged because of electromagnetic waves inside it. Meanwhile, Naoto and Marie tirelessly work on rebuilding the Pillar of Heaven. Vermouth and Halter retreated because of the military's continuous assaults inflicting further damage on the pillar, prompting Naoto and Marie to simultaneously repair and reconstruct it from the very beginning. The old man, Jenai again talks to Naoto. Referring to him as why the old man tells them to stop working as mankind is already doomed but Marie replies with a similar answer as Naoto gave him below the surface making him believe that they are too wise. As the team geared up for Yatsukahagi's destructive plan, Ancho R selflessly put herself on the line, sacrificing her own well-being to destroy vital generators. However, her brave act faced a sudden obstacle when the old man fired a powerful railgun through her stomach. In a crucial moment, the old man is about to kill her but fortunately Ryazu swoops in, rescuing Ancho R and swiftly incapacitating the old man by severing his hand but the old man reveals that does not need to worry as another cannon is about to be launched but suddenly the automaton screen shows an error. Undeterred, Naoto and Marie diligently work together to complete the task of rebuilding the Pillar of Heaven amidst all the chaos and uncertainty. In a surprising turn, the group has nowhere to run because the place has been cornered by the military. Responding to Marie's unconventional plea, Hauka agrees to label them as the most powerful radicals globally. Together with Vermouth, the trio makes a hasty exit from the escalating disorder, abandoning the old man to confront his destiny amid the explosive demise of Yatsukahagi. Fast forward two weeks, on a boat in the South China Sea, Halter's brain is reunited with its original body. Ancho R undergoes a complete restoration, and Naoto and Marie find themselves immersed in intense debates while tactically planning their next maneuvers against the approaching battleships. If you liked what you saw consider subscribing to the channel and stay tuned for more quality uploads.